Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for Coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, Cornell Wiley. Well, I was really touched by one of your LinkedIn posts, and that's how you came to my attention. And in this post, you featured two photographs of yourself, one on the left in which you are casually dressed. You've got a knit hat on your head and you're not smiling. I think it was even a black and white photograph. Mm -hmm. And the other of you on the right is in a colorful suit. It was a blue suit. You had a lavender pocket square in your breast pocket and you have a big smile on your face. (laughs) (laughs) Why don't you tell our listeners, Carmel, why you posted these two photographs and what your message was? As you see and you look at the pictures and without anything I've said after you will judge. It's just natural. I have close to $50,000 of jewelry on me. I'm in a beanie, which I pulled it down. And I always hear my daughter say, Daddy, pull your hat up. I want to see your eyes. So I'm not smiling. Am I upset? Absolutely not. I just thought I was going to be a model back then. I don't know. But (laughs) during that time, that's where I was. Okay, still the person I am today. Now you take the hat off. Now you see me. You see my expression. I'm dressed differently. And as I hear my grandmother say at times, you dress your age. Oh, well, I didn't know what that meant. So I can't wear a baseball hat. This is an older lady telling me this, my grandmother telling me this. So now I have to be appropriate. Well, now, how do I want people to foresee me now? I'm still happy. And in my profession, This is how I would choose to dress, how I would approach my profession and anybody I'm meeting. I think your first impression means a lot. Okay. Going through what I've said is everyone is going to view their opinion and place their judgment upon me through that picture. It was also 20 years ago. So understanding what's going on in all the world, I wanted to really say And there's no right or wrong answer, Mrs. Andrew. There's none. What it is, is what do you feel? What are you looking at now? And even sometimes when I look at it, I'll be the first one to tell you. And I used the word thug. I was like, well, who is this guy to the left? I wouldn't want this guy approaching me. But that guy in the right, though, absolutely. Who is he? I'm more intrigued with him now. Might be intrigued with the other one, too, as well. But what bad is he doing? He looks so bad. And I use the color black. I have black on. It's so dark. But I wasn't dark. Now look at him over there to the right. Look at his expression. And as most people say, I don't smile. I should smile more. So I smile more. I'm more accepted now. Have no hair. I didn't like that look at first. But now I'm getting into it. I get it now. And it's okay for you to initially judge me. And just the fact that you did, we come to this point now. We get the elephant out of the room. And the most important thing, which you've shared with me and I'm sharing with you, is I think the best incredible thing has happened. They're listening now. I understand our youth. I understand you're frustrated. But guess what? They're listening now. Now talk. Speak freely. Speak peacefully. But speak. You also said, Carl Nell, I mean, you use the word that the guy on the left looked more thug. like a thug, looked more thug-like. But the fact is, you are the same good person mm-hmm. in both pictures. 
Mm-hmm. And so the fact that in this country you have had people of color, black people treated differently in sometimes very subtle ways, in sometimes very heavy handed ways. Very. But you wrote that the people with power must start doing the right thing. What does that right thing look like for you? The right thing is please do not be selective on judging people early on. I could have took that hat off and the jewelry off and gave you a big hug after that. Yep. Which I'm going to do the same in that suit. I'm going to give you a handshake and everything. I am never going to approach you and you do not know me with my hat on. I would take my hat off. Even if I have a beanie on, I would take it off and you see me. I'd do that right there if I came out of those pictures. And I would say, hey, how you doing? And give you a hug. And when I'm talking about higher people, people in office that are able to make these decisions, but I think it starts with the normal day people walking and what's being said at home. You know, I went further. If you go further down and you're reading, it starts at home. What are we telling our children? What do we know? Because sometimes as adults and we do have kids, we go tell them what we've been told. Do we really know? Has it been changed? Can we add on to something? Can we take some things that might have been a little bit more exaggerated? Can we open them up to culture a little bit more to understand why is that black man looked upon that way? Is it the color of his skin? Is the way he acts? Does that mean I was going to curse you out? I don't know. But Carmel, if I could just, and I want to couch this by saying that if anything I say is offensive, please tell me that is the farthest thing from my intention to say anything that would be considered hurtful. But when I hear you say that you should take your hat off as you're approaching me, My feeling is you should be able to keep your hat on. Why should the way that you are dressed provoke? It's what society has driven. Right? Yes, it does. But I'm 6'4". I'm approaching you. It could be abruptly. Mm -hmm. It could be just, hey, I wanted to get to meet you. I'm going to show you. And that's just me from that picture on to probably when I was a kid. I was always taught you take your hat off. When you walk in a building, as well as I approach you, and I understand that now, look at us now, we're walking around with masks on. Right. Holy smokes. That's incredible. And now, guys, people are putting their hoods on and with masks on, which would before ours, you walk into the store, you're robbing it. Let's all put the cameras on them. Let's put uh, an employee on them. There it is. Now, it's not too much. It's not too much. And it's okay. I get it because you don't know where your background's from. There's a lot of people that only know a handful of black people. Mm. I tell my friends now, and uh, let's just go back. A quick example is I told my girls when I coached them, I had all little white girls, loved them. And the first thing I asked them, do you know anybody black other than me? And you know, one of my best little players, she was a freshman and she said, coach, do half these count? Now, oh. the, it's about 100 people. Now, hold on. That's not offensive. though. No, that's not. That's her saying. Now, I have to understand, honey, what's half these? Well, that's my daughter. But we don't know their lingo that these you are using now. Yeah. It's not what we used to call people before. You know, I don't know. We just called the mix. But now those are the questions we need to be on now. Nothing else. And it's totally fine. I'm not offensive to that, Yeah. especially with the youth. So I also want to pass out something. I don't know if it helps in any people can view this totally different. But I say now, allow them to say it now. If you need, well, I, we use the N word. Well, why do we use that word now? Because it's cool. We hear it in a rap song. Well, no, don't use it. It's improperly used. And you can't say it and understand why you can't say it. I don't know. We don't know what they're doing. When have we taken the time to understand the youth, the way they talk, the wordings, Mm. and it's just by hearsay. Well, you say it now. If I said groovy, if I brought the word groovy back in, it'd be said again. It'd be trendy again. 
Well, maybe so because you said it. <laughs> <laughs> it. It's just, it's very baffling that we have to watch our speech. And it's very shocking. And we say it now. We're listening. When is the last time you can have a conversation and talking about the black and the white? And there's now that could be conversations talked about with a white dad that a black man married his white daughter. Now they can talk. They couldn't before. Now they're talking. Now they're having a conversation. And they all were in fear. I would fear now that I have my daughter is feared that I'm going to sit down with possibly a white man and say, hey, guys, understand this. I understand my father now saying, I'm not worried about you guys. I'm worried about my grandbaby. I get it now. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee. 24-7, no matter where you live. I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.